Now that we've talked about all the human herpes viruses, let's talk about the drugs that treat them. And before we start, note that none of these medications completely cures us of herpes viruses. No matter what, there's always going to be some latent virus left. But they can sometimes prevent outbreaks if you take them early enough, or otherwise reduce the duration and severity of disease. Now for the main anti-herpetic agents, there are drugs and prodrugs. Now what is a prodrug? It's a molecule that's metabolized into the drug by the body. And the advantage of a prodrug is if a drug can't be absorbed orally, sometimes the prodrug can be. So it's a way to give something orally that would otherwise require IV. Okay, so now what are the antiherpetic agents? We'll go into detail about all of them, but first let's name them. There is acyclovir and its prodrug valacyclovir. And these are first-line drugs to treat HSV and VZV. They have a small amount of CMV activity, but are not the drugs of choice for CMV. Then there's pencyclovir and its prodrug famcyclovir. And these also mainly have action against HSV and VZV. And then there's gancyclovir and its prodrug valgancyclovir. And these are the first-line drugs for CMV. And they actually also have a fair amount of HSV and VZV activity, but they're not the drugs of choice for those, mostly because they are more toxic than acyclovir and valacyclovir. So again, all three of these prodrugs can be given orally and metabolized into their counterparts, which are these three. And these counterparts aren't well absorbed orally, and so they're given IV, except pencyclovir, which actually comes in a topical formulation. And to understand how they work, we're going to have to go back to biochemistry. So when you're synthesizing a strand of DNA, in order to add nucleotides to DNA, the nucleotides first need to be phosphorylated. So for thymidine, for example, first it needs to be made into thymidine monophosphate, then thymidine diphosphate, and then thymidine triphosphate. And once you have those three phosphate groups on it, then the energy in those phosphates can be used by DNA polymerase to bind the thymidine to the DNA strand. And the first reaction here is done by an enzyme called thymidine kinase, and then these next two are done by other enzymes. So to understand these drugs, you need to know that. And the other thing you need to know is, remember how herpes viruses are DNA viruses? Well, it turns out they have their own DNA polymerase, and they also have their own kinases that can, for example, turn thymidine into thymidine monophosphate. So now, how does acyclovir work? Well, it's a guanosine analog. And guanosine looks like this, whereas acyclovir looks like this. So you can see that where guanosine has a cyclic group, acyclovir does not. Hence why it's called acyclovir. It's acyclic. When acyclovir gets into a cell infected by a herpes virus like HSV, it's phosphorylated by viral thymidine kinase to acyclovir monophosphate. Since it's a guanosine analog, you might think that it should be phosphorylated by a guanylate kinase. But no, it's a thymidine kinase that acts on it. And again, it's only the viral one. The human thymidine kinase does not recognize it because it's not actually thymidine. Now after that, the other human enzymes we talked about turn it into acyclovir diphosphate and then acyclovir triphosphate. Now because this acyclovir triphosphate looks a lot like guanosine triphosphate, the viral DNA polymerase now gets confused and adds it onto the viral DNA chain. But that causes chain termination because normally the next nucleotide would be attached to this OH group here, which is absent from the acyclovir molecule. So as a result, the virus is prevented from replicating. Now luckily, the human DNA polymerase does not recognize the acyclovir triphosphate much, so mainly the virus is affected. And it turns out that HSV and VZV have thymidine kinase, but CMV does not, which is why acyclovir doesn't really work against CMV. So that's acyclovir. Now what about gancyclovir? Well, gancyclovir almost works exactly the same way. It looks very similar, and it's also a guanosine analog. So why does it work on CMV when acyclovir doesn't? The reason is that CMV has a different viral kinase that can phosphorylate gancyclovir. And after it does that, just the same as with acyclovir, host enzymes make it into gancyclovir triphosphate, which inhibits the viral DNA polymerase and also causes chain termination like acyclovir. But one thing to make this more confusing, in HSV or VZV infected cells, gancyclovir can also be phosphorylated by the viral thymidine kinase. 
Not surprising since it looks so similar to acyclovir. And thus it does have activity against HSV and VZV. But again, we don't like to use it for those because it's more toxic than acyclovir. Now it's clear why it matters that the drug preferentially interacts with the viral DNA polymerase and not the human DNA polymerase, otherwise our cells would be killed. But why does it matter that only the viral kinase recognizes the drug and not the human kinase? It matters because it means that a mutation in the kinase or downregulation of the kinase can make the virus resistant to the drug because the drug will not be phosphorylated the first time. And most resistance to acyclovir and gancyclovir actually happens by this method. And otherwise, resistance can also occur by mutating the viral DNA polymerase so that it no longer recognizes the phosphorylated drug.